You know, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And there are times when you pray, you wonder why your prayers are blocked, why your prayers don't seem to get answered, why they seem to take so long to get results, if at all, if God's even listening to you. And then sometimes you get so full of doubt, you wonder if there's a God at all. Well, the one thing I noticed in the Bible, there are a lot of examples where Jesus asked rhetorical questions. In our day, if it were not Jesus and it was someone else, we would say, duh. But there's a reason why he asked those rhetorical questions. What would thou have me to do? Will thou be made whole? What do you desire? I mean, sometimes it's like, uh, can, you can look at me and see what I need. That goes without question. That's a no-brainer. Some of us would go as far disrespectfully as to say, that's kind of a stupid question, don't you think? So my point in saying that is in spite of the fact that Jesus already knows, in spite of the fact that he, he doesn't need you to tell him what's wrong, there's a reason why he specifically makes you mouth, articulate, say, explain, whatever the case is, what your need is. See, a lot of us will go up and say, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Father, with my unspoken request. Yeah, whatever. You keep on waiting here. Now, if you come to me and you've got a need, I'm going to share something with you. I'm, I'm going to show. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Someone did come to me and my husband years ago. It was a family member on my husband's side. We had under $15,000 in an account that was a credit line and didn't matter how we used it. The credit was so good on our record. We were able to use it any way we wanted and we didn't have to pay no more than 2% interest. Now at the time, my husband's family member called up crying his eyes out. I mean, he was bawling his eyes. He wanted his father to pray for him. Milton prays. And then they get to talking. Now, Milton doesn't know what's going on, so he's just praying. He's, he's shooting blanks. Finally, his son says, you know, we're really in a bad place right now. The owner of their property is going into foreclosure, or whatever the case may be, and we have to evacuate the premises. And we have no money, nowhere to go, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was really, really a big mess. And they were going to stay with his mother-in-law. And, of course, that wasn't a happy moment because mother-in-law and daughter, uh, mother-in-law and his wife did not get along. As it is, now we're praying for a miracle, right? All right. Now, check this out. Listen to this story. He's crying over the phone. And while I'm hearing them talk, the Lord puts in my mind $10,000. It's low money. We ain't got that kind of cash floating around. We got to pay that back. Low money. Oh, boy. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, okay, Lord. Well, if that's really you, we're going to test this. Because I'm not just going to you know, fork that out unless you prove that you really want. Now, this is my specific prayer. He gave me an instruction. This is my specific prayer. I need you to prove to me that this is really you talking. So whatever I do, make him, Milton's son, say that exact same amount or else he ain't getting no more than a thousand. That's the way we pray. When he, I asked Milton to ask his, his son to hold for a minute. I told Milton what the Lord told me. And Milton was like, are you serious? I was just going to give him a thousand. 
I said, I know because we're doing it out of loan money as it is, but God said 10,000. And he said, oh my goodness. So we prayed about it real quick. And then we got back with his son. And I took, you know, Milton handed me the phone. He said, my wife wants to talk to you, babe. So I said, I need you to tell me if everything could solve your problem, whatever the amount is, don't worry about if anybody has it or not. What is the actual amount you need to handle your problem, to solve your problem right now? Quick, fast, in a hurry. He started mumbling around like many of us do, right? Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter, Pat. I know nobody has it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all right. Just pray for us. I said, tell me the amount. Oh, Pat. I said, what's the point? I mean, if, if we were to get all our needs met and, and solve the problem, be able to get it, we need about $10,000. I said, okay, you got it. Come over tomorrow and pick it up. He, I mean, it was nothing but dead silence on the other end of the phone. He was like, how? I said, we have loan money. We have a credit line. And God told me that amount. But you had to say it or else you weren't going to get it. Boy, he really started crying then. Sometimes God requires specifics. He knows what you need. He needs you to speak it. The power of the tongue. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. Sometimes you must speak what you need. God knows what you need. You know what you need. You know he knows what you need. Speak it anyway. Be specific. When Milton and I, when the house was in foreclosure and we were going through all those changes trying to stay in the, stay in the house until God could work out a solution. I sat in the car for two hours and talked to the Lord. I cried to the Lord, you guys. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of the foreclosure. I'm tired of the city. I'm tired of the traffic. It would be so beautiful if you could, here comes the specifics, bless us with a place out in the country somewhere, but we're only like five minutes from all the shopping things that we need, the banks, the stores, the hospitals, everything. It would be beautiful if we could live in an oasis, you know? It would be beautiful not to have to fight traffic. It would be beautiful to have peace and quiet rather than horns and traffic. It would be beautiful to live in a low crime area. It would be beautiful to live in a place that's well-maintained, that we don't have to worry about fixing something every other month with the money that we don't even have. And I just went down my list. Had no idea that that prayer moved a miracle. We live in a desert area in the country, out in the boonies, the shopping mall, everything that we need, I can walk three blocks to get to it. I don't even have to drive. It's not even a five minute drive. It's a 10 minute walk. So my point is now all the traffic is a mile away, but everything we need is within one to two miles some of them within just two or three blocks. So my point in saying that is that now living in this community with nothing but trees and greenery all over the place in a house that is well-maintained in excellent shape in a community that's very quiet and peaceful, don't hear any cars or anything, not in here. What I'm trying to tell you is God answered that prayer specifically. I also threw in swimming pool, a uh, pool table, hot tub, swimming pool for me, pool table, I mean, pool table for me, swimming pool for me, hot tub for Milton, and he also loved the swimming pool. So we both got everything we needed, and Milton liked to go fishing. There's a fishing pond. I have uh, about a mile away from my house. 
Now, of course, Milton's with the Lord now. But everything that we've been longing for was right here waiting for us to move to. And God was the one that said, turn on, a, turn on your computer. I got something for you. That was my answered prayer. Now, how specific are you being with your prayers? Or are you just fumbling around in the dark, figuring, well, ain't nobody got no help for me, so why bother uh, specifying? Mm -hmm. you, know, you go on and generalize all you want. See how much longer it takes to get those prayers answered. Say what you want. God said, come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in need. Listen, God wants you to tell him what you want. You're not begging for welfare. It's yours to have. Everything belongs to God. All he's got to do is make a way for you to get it and make a way for it to get to you. Ask him. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And I'm stopping right there. Chew on that.